These mag magic mushrooms, if you will, can help mothers just get through the day. Call it a life hack. One mother and marketing exec in Los Angeles told the Wall Street Journal, I work hundreds of hours a week and it helps my performance. It allows me to be my best self. Dr. Greg Fonzo, psychologist who works with patients using mushrooms, Tracy T, mother of one, is here with us as well. Fair to say, uh, Tracy, what would you call it, an enthusiast of, of this? I would fair, yeah, I'd say I'm an enthusiast, absolutely. Okay, so what's it like? Uh, well, you know what? I think it's actually the opposite of mommy's little helper. Um, microdosing is actually brings me into more presence and I am not numbing out. It is an expander in terms of how I am able to live my life. And it isn't uh, band-aiding anything that I want to avoid. So I love it when people kind of equate moms who microdose as, oh, it's mommy's next little helper. Um, in some ways it is a helper, but it's not in anything, in any energy, like anything in the past. It's not like Valium. It's not like booze. It's not like cocaine. Um, I find okay. myself to be like more present, uh, less overwhelmed and more like myself. All right. So Greg, I saw Tracy's, uh, what we call the lower third, the, the graphic that says she is a uh, founder of moms on mushrooms. Are there a lot of moms on mushrooms that you found? Uh, it's becoming more and more common nowadays, yes. All right, so how is this different? And I mean, I, I, I take Tracy's point, but you know, there was a time that amphetamines were, was mom's little helper, then, then there was opiates, then there was barbiturates. I mean, at some point, isn't, isn't all of these drugs just one version or another of altering your reality? Um, yes. So the, uh, I think all those drugs would be considered what you call psychoactive. Uh, so they would alter one state of consciousness. Um, psychedelics in particular and psilocybin, which is the compound that's in uh, magic mushrooms, um, is undergoing a lot of investigation now uh, in clinical studies for its potential to be a, a mental health uh, treatment, uh, particularly for various conditions like depression, um, anxiety, and, uh, and addictions as well. Um, whether or not um, it can be used as a, uh, a general tool for improvement of well-being is, is an open question, though. All right, so Tracy, uh, to be fair to the FDA, they've not approved a drug product containing psychosilbin. Uh, therefore, the effectiveness and safety of psychosilbin as a drug has not been evaluated by the FDA for any therapeutic indication. I'm guessing you would take issue with that. Um, I think it's I think it's unfortunate that that's the stance of the FDA. Um, I think that we can listen to tens, hundreds of thousands of people who have been working with this medicine um, and listen to their stories and listen to the anecdotal results. And we know that the studies that have been done about psilocybin show that it's low in toxicity, lower than alcohol, cocaine, heroin. Oh, well, uh, it's I, not I get addictive. the idea. And look, yeah. look, I mean, you know, there, there, for a long time, there was marijuana that people were saying, you know, had all these wonderful uh, effects on people and was was very low in, in terms of danger. And the FDA said the same things. Now, obviously, there's medical marijuana and everything else. Take us through a day uh, of using of using this, of microdosing. Yeah, well, first, I just want to point out that microdosing, you're not high. So we're not talking about moms running around a car line into playgrounds, uh, seeing rainbows and unicorns. It's actually quite the opposite. We're taking low doses of psilocybin um, that are allowing us to potentially, because yes, there is not any longitudinal studies out yet about microdosing, but kind of reap the benefits of what a large dose journey, journey does on a lower, in a lower amount that isn't um, altering your mind, no hallucinogenic effects. So um, a typical day for me is I, when I choose to microdose, which is not every day and you never want to microdose every day, um, I take 50 milligrams, which is a very, very small amount. I take it in the morning and throughout the day, I just find that I'm able to kind of tap into more presence, less overwhelm, less anxiety, more compassion, yeah. all the things that every mom wants to offer a family. All right. Fair enough. Um, Doc, luxury experience in Vancouver, $15,000 for four nights. Retreat in Denver, $8,100, four nights in coaching. 10-hour music-based psychedelic experience, $1,000.
At some level, and I, I, I take the point that, you know, um, there's all sorts of folks on all sorts of different medications. Um, is there really any any difference in any of uh, these things? And I, I, I look at it, and I'm sure there's a lot of people at home going, gee, sounds wonderful, but uh, Prozac is 10 cents on insurance, and we're talking $15,000 for four nights. Where's the, the delta in that come in? There are uh, differences in regards to the way the drugs work. Um, I think what you're getting at, though, is do for does, for example, microdosing psilocybin have a benefit that would be superior, let's say, to something that's cheaper like Prozac? Um, and really, the research is is out at the moment, so we don't have a lot of good studies, particularly with microdosing. Uh, most of the work that's been done has been looking at high doses, um, where people have a strong hallucinogenic experience. Uh, and those studies do show that there may, be, in fact, be some benefit uh, for folks with um, particular conditions. But I think we really do need to do some more research on uh, very low dosing or microdosing, uh, as it's called, in order to understand like what kind of effects it does have on one's mood, one's ability to concentrate and focus, productivity, um, a lot of these things that we still don't really have good answers on. Can I just say, though, in terms of cost, um, those costs of those retreats that you just um, showed, yeah. Uh, that is an exorbitant amount of money. And yeah. I think as we start to lean into these modalities as actual therapies and take them seriously, my hope is that those prices go way down and they become less novel and more of something that is a useful part of someone's mental health healing. You guys are on the cutting edge of this. It's fun to talk about. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.